Hello and welcome to our tips and tricks. Today I would like to explain how parallel compression works and how you can use it in Cubase. Parallel compression is also called New York compression or the New York compression trick. The reason is that sound engineers from New York City have made this technique popular. I have prepared a loop and I'm using instruments from the current version of Cubase, Cubase 6.5. For example, for the bass I'm using the Retroloke and for the drums I'm using Groove Agent 1. As a start, I will play the loop and you might realize that the drums are not yet sitting right in the mix. What could I do to get the drums up front in the mix? One option would be to simply compress the drum channel. It would increase the overall loudness of the drums, but I will also probably lose some of the punch of the drums along the way due to the fact that I'm reducing the level of the transients. The better option here would be to use a second channel in the mixer, heavily compress the drums and then at this to the uncompressed drum signal. Now how does it work in Cubase? Here I have several drum tracks. These could of course also be recordings of a real drum set. I have routed all of them to a group which I have called drums uncompressed. And the important thing now is that I've created a second channel in the mixer which I am feeding via a send from the uncompressed drum channel. I have called this group drums compressed and set it to pre-fader to be able to set the levels of those two tracks independently. In the end I have two channels in the mixer which both carry the drum signal. One of them is uncompressed, the other one is heavily compressed. For the actual compression I have loaded a compressor into the first insert of the second drum channel. I'm using the Compressor 260, which is part of the Vintage Channel Strip. I think it works really well with drums, but of course you can also use any other compressor you have available, also the ones that already come with Cubase. Important here is that I'm using rather short attack and release times, and I'm also compressing the signal using a rather high ratio. Don't be shy here. For this effect to work, you actually have to compress the second channel rather heavily. Just remember, we don't want to actually use this channel just on its own in the mix, but we would rather mix it with the uncompressed drum channel. Now I will play the loop again and this time gradually increase the level of the compressed signal. I think it was quite easy to hear that the drums are now sitting more up front in the mix. We're almost at the end now. I will now play the loop one more time, first without parallel compression and then with the compressed channel. Have fun trying this yourself. It also works great on a bass or vocals. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.